stand on top of this thing. Give me an E! Give me an S! Give me a U! Yes, you! Yes, you! Students first! Students first! Students first! Welcome to the ESU rally. We're all here. Back to the future. We want funding for 2012 for our public universities to be at 2012 levels. Our governor has proposed to cut funding for ESU and our other great public universities to 1989 levels. today to be here as the president of ESU ABSCA, the organization that represents the faculty and coaches. We're taking a stand for students first. Students first! Yeah. Yeah. I've invited my student, Kelly Hasten, to come up here with me. Kelly is the reason why I teach at ESU. It's students like Kelly that make a tremendous difference to our state. Kelly lives right here in our local county. I want Kelly to tell you her story and why ESU matters so much to her. Kelly? I've always Woo! wanted to yeah. be sports fan. I've always wanted to be a sports journalist, so I knew I had to go to college. I went to a community college before coming to ESU. The tuition prices went up last year, and I had to work more hours at ShopRite. I am paying for college by myself, and if yeah. tuition goes up even more, I may not be able to come here anymore. I have to get my master's degree, though. Yeah. yeah. Kelly is a great student. Kelly deserves a high-quality public education. I'm here taking a stand for Kelly. Are you taking a stand for Kelly? Yeah! Yeah, Kelly! Is there a high class public education in Pennsylvania? Yeah! Kelly, students first, students first. Students I mean, first, students first. And Kelly's going to have a great career in journalism. Thank you so much, Kelly. If we can get you graduated so you can afford... But we are lucky in Pennsylvania and in Monroe County and in this part of Pennsylvania to have some legislators who really care about ESU. I'm delighted that our local legislators could join us today and could speak to you about the message they're going to take to Harrisburg for us. It's actually back to the past, unfortunately. I can tell you this. The best investment we can make is in education in Harrisburg. Basic Ed and higher ed. The best investment we can make. I was shocked when I saw the governor's budget. And I said, right the minute I heard it, I went outside, but not right up on YouTube, that I could not support this budget if there's any cuts to our schools. I'd like to see some of the dollars restored, and that's what I'm working towards. I truly believe that his revenue estimate is way off. It's between 400 and 500 million off. I expect there should be more dollars to see this. At least if we can put some dollars back in and make up for some of those cuts, that's what I'd like to see. And hopefully that's what will happen. But I can tell you this, this budget will not pass with these cuts. You've got my word on it. We have Representative Carroll and Representative Brown. Why don't you guys come on up also? I used to be athletic. I think Representative Scavello said it very well. 
Um, we here locally as state representatives feel very strongly about these budget cuts and I know you're all very tech savvy so you can jump on my website repbrown.com you'll see me on a five to six minute video where I specifically say that, the, that my, my support is not there for this budget with this 20% cut to higher education. So, um, we're gonna fight for you and realize how important it is and with last year's cuts, we understand that it's very crucial this year what we do with this budget and um, we understand the value of the education, how important it is that you're educated not only locally, but for the state, but also globally. And also that it's done, um, that we have a very reasonable tuition rate too. So thank you, keep studying, and we'll keep doing our job to make sure that we don't support this budget. Thanks, Rosemary. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Mike Carroll, and I'm a representative for two counties, Monroe County and Luzerne County. And Rosemary mentioned that she's tech savvy, and I am to some extent, but more than that, I'm a street fighter. Yeah. And what I do, in from, as a, a, a native of Greater Pittston, is we try and pick a fight that we can win. And when it comes to a fight related to higher ed, especially at universities like Stroud's, East Stroudsburg, and Bloomsburg, and the rest, that's a fight that we absolutely have to have, and that's a fight that I'm hopeful that we can win. I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to the support from Mario and Rosemary to join those other like-minded legislators who are committed to properly funding higher ed. It's a core function of our state government. It's something that's vitally important to all of you here and your peers across the state. We have to win this fight. We have to find the money. It's a responsibility that we as legislators and that the governor has. Let's go. I just came back from Harrisburg. I just got back in about 25 minutes ago. And then that two hour drive, the only thing that came to mind was Governor Corbett. This has to be a joke. This has to be a joke because nobody knows the education that we get from East Stroudsburg University. Nobody understands how much we connect with East Stroudsburg University and how important it is to us. Only people that can say that is the students. And we have to call to action. And little does the governor know is that he called to action a group of warriors. That's who we are. So we need to let the governor know that we're here for our university and we're ready to take a stand and really fight for our education and fight for the funding that we all deserve. Okay. Write to the governor, let everybody know that this is our school and we're going to take it back. So with that, I would just like to let everybody know that I'm here for the fight for the long haul for not just today, and I will be the voice of the student body today, but we have to be the voice of the student body for years to come as well. Thank you. Okay, everyone. I don't know about all of you, but I'm angry that I have to be here for the second year fighting for an education that I'm paying for. That you are all paying for. Are you not paying for your education? Yeah. My name is Felicia Rivero and I am the student representative on the President's Council of Trustees. Woo. I want you all to know that I also just came back from Harrisburg with Rich. While we drove back, we both just kept saying, what are we going to say to everyone? And it's just, are you kidding me? Are we seriously doing this again? Well, it has to end this year. Every single one of you, I know you have Facebook, every single one of your students needs to go back to your dorm room, go back home, start posting it on your Facebook so that every single one of your friends that goes to this university and that go to any university know that this is going on. Because they cannot silence every student on a university because they think that's what they can do. So when you leave here, don't just go to the cap, don't do that, go back and tell every single person you know that this is going on, write to, your, write, write to whoever, I don't care, write to whoever, go to the governor's house, post it, talk about it, do everything you need to do, do not let this happen. Hey, students, I'm all about visual no aids today. More cuts. No, no more cuts. cuts. No, no more cuts. No more cuts. No more cuts. No more cuts! No, no more, more cuts! cuts. <laughs> Turn around. Look at those shirts. 
Each one of those shirts represents a faculty person who was not hired this year because of budget cuts. Each of those shirts represents someone who could be a presence in the classroom, someone who can help you shape your future, someone who can give you the, the knowledge, the wisdom, the modeling that you need to go forward and lead in Pennsylvania and in the nation. That's not right. Are we going to put up with that? No! I didn't put in my hearing aid. No! I, I think you said no. no! Hell no! You can't read this. This is a bumper sticker. It says, if you think education is expensive, try ignorance. Try ignorance. around. This is not a place for ignorance. This is not a place for, for ignorance. What do we say to people who, who want us to make that kind of a sacrifice? What's that word again? No! What's that word again? No! Those people say it's not important to keep jobs in Pennsylvania. We don't need an educated workforce. What do we say to those people? No! Those people say that our students aren't important enough to get personalized attention. Those people say that we should teach classes in auditoriums. Soon it'll be stadiums. What do we say to those people? No! What do we say to those people? No! Those people disregard families who are struggling to send students, their children, to college for the first time. Are we going to let them disregard those students? No! Absolutely not. Damn, no. They say it's okay to wreck the Pashi system. The Pashi system serves well over 100,000 students. We're not talking about a little group, but even little groups are important. We're talking about a major force in Pennsylvania's future that these people are asking us to disregard. They're asking us to disregard you. No. Are we gonna let them do it? <laughs> no. They say it's okay to compromise about an entire generation. Because don't be foolish. It happened last year, it's happening this year. We let them get away with it. It's gonna happen every year. No! What do you say? No! Absolutely not. This is intolerable. I can't get my sheet. <laughs> no more cuts! No more cuts! No more cuts! No more cuts! Don't they see? Now here's some things to not say no to. You see that college grads get better jobs and pay more taxes and generate more money for Pennsylvania? Is that not a truth that matters? Yes! Yeah. You see that college campuses generate huge revenues and the hundreds of millions for campus communities. Does that not matter? Yes! Yeah. Yeah. Don't they see, is it not true that we need the brain power of those standing here, students, to lead us into the future, back to the future? Don't they see how fundamental that is? It's crucial, is it not? Yes! Is it not? Yes! Don't they see that public higher education matters? Doesn't it matter? Yes! Do we want this turned into a private school? No! Do we deserve funding? Do we deserve education for every one of us? Yes! Do you see the importance of not voting for anyone who supports these budget cuts? Yes! Do you see the importance of contacting legislators, parents, relatives, friends, urging them to communicate to the decision makers in Harrisburg. We've got some good ones here, but for every good one we see there are God knows how many 
thoughtless ones who need our guidance, who need our political force. Is that not true? Yes! Are we going to do it? Yes! Are you damn right we're going to do it? <laughs> Save our school. 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 Do it now. This matters. You make a difference. You'll make more of a difference with the education you deserve, but you can make a difference now. So please, everybody's here. Let's do it. Hello. Shannon Crispin. Yes. I am a senior theater major here at this fine establishment, and I just have a couple things to say. One year ago, almost to the day, I stood right here. I stood right here, hoping the issue of the budget cuts would just blow over. A week later, I went to our state's capital and stood with hundreds of other students from across Pennsylvania fighting for the same exact cause. We joined together to fight against the giant who wanted to decrease state school funding to back where it was in 1989. Are we gonna stand for that? No! Here we are again, one year later, still fighting that giant, and now is not the time to think that there is nothing we can do to help. Am I right? Yes! I've heard some students saying recently that because they're seniors, you know, and they're graduating in May, budget cuts won't affect them. So why protest? Why fight the power? And I'll tell you why. What happens when your kid sister or your kid brother or your neighbor or friends of yours are looking to go to college and they want to go to a state school where they can afford to be here as opposed to going to a private school? Do you want to go to a private school? No! If nothing is done to prevent these budget cuts from getting worse now, it will never get better. Now we have already seen increase in class size, increase in costs. We have lost all of our adjunct professors all of whom have helped us shape the people we are today. Now, how much more do we have to lose before something changes? In an economy, in a nation, where we at least need a bachelor's degree to make a living, how do the people in Harrisburg expect us as students to succeed if we cannot afford that education? So I'm telling you, write letters, leave voicemails, go protest, show them that you care about your education because nothing else matters. I've been a faculty member here for 35 years. And I love it here. I didn't write a speech, I only brought my passion today to tell you that you deserve a quality education. You're getting a quality education at East Stroudsburg University. We don't like these cuts. No more cuts. No more cuts. Hi, ESU, and thanks for coming out to show how much you care about the public education system we have here in Pennsylvania. Thank you also to our representatives. My name is Rob McKenzie in the Department of Communication Studies, and as we look at budget shortfalls all across the United States, many state legislatures are looking at cutting public services to make up the difference. What are public services? Those are services that are provided for the greater good of the entire public at the cost of taxpayer dollars. Public services include things like postal service, they include fire services, they include medical services. When you start to break down public services and pay for them individually like they're an a la carte menu item, the whole system breaks down. Who would ever think of telling a postal carrier as they walk up your driveway and deliver you a letter, how much do I owe you? That's ridiculous. Who would ever think of a fire person who comes to rescue your house how much do I owe you? That's ridiculous. Education at the level of the she system is a public service. The dollars that pay for your education or assist your education are provided for by tax dollar services. We don't want that to break down. Most of the students who come here need those services. They didn't do as well in high school as they would have liked to have. They don't have as much money as they would expect to have had to go to a private school, so they need that little extra lift from the state. We don't want these budget cuts. We don't need them. They are detrimental to the public service of higher education. I want to finish with some questions. 
How many of you want an affordable education? <laughs> Who here wants to know your professors by name and for them to know you by name? <laughs> Who wants reasonable small classes? <laughs> Who wants a wide choices of classes? <laughs> Who wants their tax dollars to be used for education? And who wants to show everybody you meet after you graduate here what gave you what you have from public education? Yeah! Thanks, Professor McKenzie. Coach Morelli with the track and field team here, and the coaches are also part of the uh, Ask Up Union here, who, whose dedicated members thought enough of us about seven or eight years ago to get us involved and ha uh, speak with one voice. I heard your... Uh, Student Shannon mentioned that, you know, society creates hoops to jump through so you can get ahead. And one of them is a bachelor's degree for the most part, almost any situation. And it's proven that, you know, a bachelor's degree um, earns many, many more dollars over their lifetime than someone with just a high school diploma. And yet, if, if education is our future, then why would they take away the bachelor's degree from almost everybody, all right? Most of the student athletes on this campus, I like to speak for the track team because we have a large roster, a lot of those folks are first time members of their family going to college. Yeah. All right, and a lot of you guys out here are too. Yeah. And that was the purpose of public education, as Dr. McKenzie so eloquently said. It's, it's the backbone of society. I hear um, folks my age, I'm not going to tell you my age, <laughs> but it's, and, and they say, well, you know, I paid for my education, why should I pay for somebody else's? And I ask them, is your doctor, at my age, is your doctor older, is my doctor older than me? No. All right? Because I'm really old. <laughs> but, I mean, a lot of young people are leading the way in this country. It's always been the case. And this governor, I don't know where he's, where he's coming from. But the way I see it, he just wants to privatize the whole state system. And that is exactly where he's going with this. So as a coach, I tell my student athletes, it's the little things you do every day that add up to big things. So as students, you're out here yelling and screaming, yeah, it's a nice sunny day, you know. But you guys are on Facebook. I yell at my kids all the time. You know, spend, take an hour, take 15 minutes out of your Facebook time and look up your state representative, yeah. all right? Look up your local representatives at home, in your hometowns, and find out what they're doing and what they're really voting on and not what they're saying in public. So as students, you have power, all right? You can yell, scream, jump up and down, everything, but you got real power if you vote. Yeah. It's, the largest, it's one of the largest voting blocks in the country for young people. Don't sit on your butts and think somebody else is going to do it for you. My name is John Hawk from the Athletic Training Department. And, you know, 30 years ago, just about 30 years ago, I had the great privilege of coming back to this fine institution. I'm an ESU alumni. And, it. and what's interesting is Governor Corbett wants you and I to be more alike because he wants to fund you at the same level that he funded me almost 30 years ago. You know, the difference is back then rent was about $350 a month and gas was about $1.20 a gallon. I know it's hard to believe. It's harder to remember. But while that has a bit of humor in it, it's very serious because, you know, the governor's not joking. He wasn't joking last year. He's not joking this year. And he won't joke next year. The governor has no feelings for public higher education. And we need to send him a message. We're sending him a message today. And you're doing a great job. But there's some other people that are missing. And you know it. There's some other shirts that are missing here today. It's not just the shirts of those fine faculty members that were serving this institution. But it's the shirts of those friends and other students, your students, your, your peers, that couldn't afford to come back to school because they can't afford the increases in tuition and the continued cuts in funding. 
So it's time to send Governor Corbett a strong message, the strongest message ever, that it stops, the madness stops now, and that he needs to restore the funding, and we need to hold our legislators to those promises. You have the power to make change, and we need to make change this year. We need to restore that funding, and we need to put public higher education where it's supposed to be, serving you the most important commodity okay, that, that we have in this commonwealth. And that's the young students that are going to go out and they're going to change the commonwealth, they're going to change the country. I'm proud to be an ESU graduate, and I'm proud to be standing with you here today, and I can't work, wait to work with you and continue to work with you to make those positive changes. So stop the madness. Hi, I want to thank all, I'm Pat Kennedy, I teach in communication studies to my hey. colleague Rob McKenzie, and uh, I really want to thank you all for being here. Everybody counts! When our legislators look around and they want to see whether this issue matters to us, everybody counts! They look around, they see the signs, they see the faces, they see a lot of people caring. You came when you could have been other places doing your homework and stuff. And you came here instead. So this is important. I'm the daughter of somebody who was a mayor for a long time in a small city. And I know that public officials respond. When you contact them individually, they respond. When they see the numbers building up, then they look closer to see whether there's some way to be responsive to their constituents. This morning in my public speaking class, and I have three students here from two classes that I teach, we talked about why we're all here today. And we talked about the fact that in each class, and I have about 25 in each, only two or three students were planning to show up here today. And what did they say? They said, it doesn't matter to me because I'm graduating. They said, it doesn't matter to me because one voice doesn't count. They said, it doesn't matter to me because, hey, we had to pay an increase last year anyway. They overlooked the fact that the proposed increase would have been based on a 54% cut to education. And really, we only ended up with a 5% increase. So everybody that showed up last year to rally counted. All right, now these three students are going to tell you how the impacts and probably their experiences that many of you are having as well. And I'm going to start over on the far side here with Ria Millar. Hi guys, my name is Reed Milliard, and I'm 19 years old and I'm a sophomore here. I'm a communications major. And if you ask a bunch of people I know, and if you especially ask Dr. McKenzie, they'll all tell you that I'm obsessed with politics, and all my friends call me crazy for it. But this is exactly why I know about these issues, and I can help other people realize these issues too. Yes. I come from a family where I have a single mother who's unemployed because she cannot stand up for long periods of time. So these budget cuts, that keep increasing my tuition is making it harder and harder for me to go to school. And I'm one of those overachiever kids who like to do more and more each year they go. So like now I want to add a minor, so I keep going. So I'm going to be here forever. And I don't want to keep paying more and more money every single year to get the education that I deserve. I don't know about you guys, but the 13 years from kindergarten to 12th grade were hell. I just wanted to get out of there. I was so excited for college. And a lot of times it's like, why am I still here? Why am I paying all this money for an uh, unsure job? I, I think it's great that everyone came out and everyone can like get, let our legislators know that this is what we want and we're not going to back down. So thank you all for coming out here because I'd love to come back next year with the rest of you. Yeah. Okay, and then we go to Emily Fox who also wants to tell us what this mean, the cuts can mean to her. My name's Emily Fox, and I'm a freshman marine science major here. Now bear with me, I'm going to talk some numbers with you guys. According to PSCUF, his proposal cuts the funding for the PASI system by $82.5 million. 
That's not it. He's cutting grants and loans like the Pell Grant by $27.2 million. I'll do some math. That's $109.7 million that us, the students, need to make up for. I don't know about you guys, but I don't have that kind of money lying around. I can hardly afford more hair dye. Now, how many of you have received any sort of scholarship or grant? All right. Now, I know personally, the only reason I'm standing here in front of you folks is because of the funding that's being threatened. Think about this. Every time tuition is raised, and every time the budget is cut, less students will be able to receive scholarships from the state and this university, right? With these cuts, on top of the possible cuts for the Pell Grants, fewer low-income students will be able to afford university whatsoever. We need to tell Harrisburg that higher education is not, it's not, it's deserved for everyone. Us, the 99%, deserve it just as much yeah. as the people. Yeah. recipient of the Board of Governors Science and Technology Scholarship. If this problem isn't properly addressed, I have my fingers crossed that I'll be able to afford this university in my future semesters. Thanks. And last we have John Dorner, who's a returning adult student who wants to talk about some implications beyond the day to day. Hi everybody, I, wanna, I really want to thank you for coming out. Uh, two things I want to bring up. I'm glad Emily brought up the, the numbers. I just have two numbers to talk about. How many, how many students out here are working? Full-time, part-time? Let's, let's hear it, let's hear it. Round of applause. A lot. Almost everybody is working. Now, you all pay income tax. Yeah. When you pay $100, $1 goes to education, $60 goes to the military. What? This is a fact. This is a fact. Look it up. $1 for education, $60 to the military. The whole concept of budget cuts being necessary here is bogus. No reason for it. One more thing I want to bring up. I want to remind all of you of the rich and noble heritage college students have in affecting change in this country. Now I'm an adult student, I'm really an adult student, I'm 55 years old. I was around, when I was your age, it was 1973, college students were at the forefront of social change in this country. Yeah. Civil rights, women's rights, gay rights, college students were right there. College students were leaders. College students made sacrifices. And college students had courage. You guys can do it. Everybody, I'm Stephanie French from the theater department. Computer science. Mumford from Fitness. All right, it's great to see you all out here, and, and I agree that we need to get more people out here. When I was asked to speak today, because um, some of you may know I'm, I'm in the arts, and the arts have been particularly on the cutting board. Um, in a lot of we've, we've lost two theater programs in the Pashi system in two different uh, universities. Uh, SUNY Albany's theater program was cut, uh, Cornell's theater program was cut in half, and that keeps happening. And when I became chair here, the first thing I had to do was to justify our existence as a program, and I've been doing that for the last few years, and we're hanging in there, um, and we're growing, actually. Yeah, and you heard from some of my students in there. But what I want to say about, uh, a couple things I want to say about the arts and the importance of it and why um, I think it's particularly important today in our society today. Because some people think it's, it's disposable, it's expendable. Um, but one thing is if you look at the fact that we're a global society and the fact that we are always talking about how we have to stay competitive as a global society and we're competing with China. 
And I was fortunate enough, because of uh, ESU, to get to go to China last year. It was amazing. I recommend it. There's, there's trips you can take. There's one coming up this year. Um, a life-changing experience. But one of the things that that really taught me, I, I saw a lot about their education system. And I saw that their education system is based on rote memory because they have to learn 5,000 characters before they can even write. Like we learn 26, they learn 5,000 just to be able to write. And so they start out real early with this rote memorization. And I talked to some college professors there at Shanghai Normal University and, and I talked to uh, an American college professor who told me that, hey, you know, in Shanghai, it's typical on an exam for it to say, what was the heading on page 53 of such and such a book? And you have to have this photographic memory because they're training that. So they outstrip us all the time on these standardized tests that have to do with memory. But what do we do that makes us competitive in the world? We are creative. We are inventive. We are, we think outside the box. We are not in the box. We, we are able to stand up and speak out as you're all doing today in the face of adversity and to get a handle and be a part of the vision of our own future. So I really want you guys to think about the future that you want to have for you, for your children. Um, I look at these cuts and I just think that, you know, there's, there's only going to be education for the rich. So there's getting more for the 1% and less and less and less for the 99% and they're happy for you to be their workers or if you don't succeed even or you can't get a job, they're going to build more jails instead of funding education. So. <laughs> is that even though, you know, we, we read some pretty complex stuff, as I know all of you do in all of your classes, we're reading Shakespeare and we're reading Ibsen and we're reading um, Euripides right now and things like that, Moliere, but I want to leave you with something. How many of you um, read Dr. Seuss or had it read to you and your kids? How many of you ever thought of Dr. Seuss as political? <laughs> So I, I just want to leave you with something from um, Horton Hears a Who, and, and that is that um, the idea that a person is a person no matter how small, and that if you are quiet and don't have a voice, then you are going to be disappeared, and you are going to have people speak for you, and you are going to have the world decided for you. And no matter how small, and no matter if I'm only one person, you have to bang your pots and pans, and you have to shout, and I'd like you to just chant with me, we are here, we are here, we are here. We are here, we are here, we are here. And we're, we are and we're not going away, and we're not going to let you take our education away. I'm Professor Emmert from the Computer Science Department. You probably figured out that I was a professor for my gray hair. Now, a cynic would say, I'm standing up here because my job is at risk with these budget cuts, despite the fact that I'm well tenured. <laughs> no, that's not the reason. You might say, well, he's up here because he's got two daughters at Kutztown. He's got to pay for their tuition. That's true, but that's not why I'm here. <laughs> it's not here. Not the reason that I'm up here is because my son graduated from here six years ago. No, the reason why I'm up here, and the reason why I'm up here is also not my 30 years of service to this campus. The reason why I'm up here is 1974, the year I graduated from this campus. Now, I'm going to confess something. My family was poor. Very poor. Even with both my parents working, we just barely managed to get above the poverty line most years. When I was a student here, when I graduated, I was the first member of my family to graduate and it's possibly as long as 400 years. When I was a student here, the state supported the education of the students here by over 60% of your education. Now, with this budget cut, it's going to be under 20.
even with the funds that these people are talking about, we're not going to get anywhere near 60% like it used to be. I think you guys are getting a raw deal. I'm Sean Mumford from the Fifth Department, and luckily, uh, or unluckily for some of you, I've met many of you in class before. <laughs> uh, um, I'm a stickler for things, and one of the things that I am a stickler for is quality and commitment to excellence. And right now, our legislators, our governors, are not showing that public higher ed provides good quality, and not, are not showing that we are committed to an excellent education for all of our students. Now, I also graduated from here. Not in 1974. I first graduated from a sister school, Bloomsburg, and then decided to come to ESU to further my education and graduated from here and then was fortunate enough to have the opportunity to come back and serve you guys based on my experience of being a student and a graduate student in this system. <laughs> Speaking of poor, I'm from the middle of North Philadelphia. Okay. okay. All right, let's be honest quickly. All right. The poverty line. We didn't even see the poverty line where I grew up. All right, I couldn't reach it with a 12 foot ladder. Okay, I grew up with a huge family of about 10 people living in a two bedroom house. All right, and some of them weren't even my relatives. I don't know who they were. All right, but if it wasn't for state funding and state legislation and people assisting me to go to school, I wouldn't be standing here in front of you. All right, I'm here to tell you that all of your voices matter, all of you count. You are the captains of your own ship. Guide your ship in the direction you want it to go. Reach out to those who matter and make your voices heard that we will not stand for these proposed budgets. Hey everybody, I'm Michelle Jones-Wilson from chemistry. Hey. And, you know, I like numbers. Put a lot of numbers on some shirts today for you all to read. Okay, about what the effect of uh, budget cuts have been so far. How many of you like paying more for less? No. I didn't think so, because that's what you're doing. And they're going to be asking you to pay even more for even less. Right? You need, we got our legislators who came here today to support us. Right? And we're very thankful that they came. Thank you very much for being here. Thank all of you for being here, but the work is not done. Some stuff coming up right over there by the lamppost. We've got a table. There are postcards there for you to sign to have sent to your legislators to let them know that you're not going to stand for this. There's information available. That information to help you uh, write letters to your legislator. Who to call? Take an extra one. Give it to mom and dad if mom and dad's putting the bill. No offense to the older students here. Okay. Um, you know we got that over there as well. Next week, Wednesday. Sending buses from ESU to Harrisburg. Yeah. If the governor can't hear us from here, he's going to hear us from the Capitol steps. Yeah. Right, so bus sign up right over there. If you want to go, we'll take you. All right. So I think that's wrapping it up for today. Thank you all for coming out. And we're not done. We got to stop this. No more cuts. No more cuts. No more cuts.
Yeah, well, I, you know, I don't know. There's a couple of uh, courses well, I want to thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, 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 thank you. Oh,